to school is a special time for both kids and teachers, but no matter how long you have been teaching, it still is a lot of work from classroom setup, figuring out your systems and routines, all of the back to school meetings, somewhere in the mix, you have to figure out lesson planning specifically for those first few weeks and still make it meaningful. With that in mind, in today's episode, I will be sharing with you five STEM activities that you can use in your K-5 STEM classroom. This first one is a great one, especially if you teach all the kids in the school like I do. This is a way that you can make introducing the rules in your classroom more hands-on and engaging. So instead of you just standing up there and presenting the classroom rules, blah, 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 don't care what you have to say, this is going to be a really fun one for your kids. So first, quickly introduce what your classroom rules are. You're not going to explain all of them in detail. Just read through them, show them. A really big tip when having your classroom rules is to have pictures and words. Again, just like when you label all of your makerspace supplies that we talked about in past and future episodes, you want to have your classroom rules labeled with words and pictures. Once you have this presented either up on your projector, TV, or even printed out, you're going to have smaller sets of the same exact rules printed out and cut into puzzle pieces. So I made about seven different sets of these same rules. So I uh, found online a puzzle template where I layered on top of my rules on the computer, and then I cut out those puzzle pieces beforehand. With those seven sets, I even printed them out in different colors, so each table group had a different color. Now, what makes this really challenging is that all of the rules are cut up and mixed up, and the goal is that when students are working in teams, either ones that they choose themselves or ones that you pick, they are going to have to put the rules back together. Now, if you have quite a few rules, don't make too many, but if you have quite a few, about six, maybe cut up about four, and that even adds another challenge as well because if you don't tell them which rules are cut up in their little bags, then that will make it even harder. So this is a great way for kids can really keep focusing on what the classroom rules are. I do keep the full images up for them so they can keep referring. And they're always talking about those rules together. So if the rule is tools are materials, not toys, they keep saying that over and over. So there is that repetition of my classroom rules. And they're learning the other kids in their groups, talking about it and figuring out a system that works best for them. I have a little prize at the end, so just something simple like a pencil or a STEM sticker or something not that cool, but they think it's pretty cool. And they get that as a little prize. After that, whether all the groups have finished or a few have finished, depending on how it's going in the class, then I will review what those classroom rules are, and then we'll jump into our full lesson for the day. This doesn't take the whole class time, but this is a great icebreaker where kids are talking and collaborating, um, learning your classroom rules, and figuring you out as you go. Now you can do the first activity and then do the second activity within the same day. All you need are just a basic bucket of mixed Lego bricks and is your all about me Lego build. This is a fun one. It's a cool way to get a get to know you, be hands-on, and all students can participate. So think of questions that you can ask kids that are pretty general and all kids can participate. So maybe things that are saying, do you have a pet? Did you read a book this summer? Maybe stay away from those questions are, where did you go this summer? You go on a trip. Things like that might um, be a little hard for kids if they can't afford to go on trips. So think of things that most kids might be able to do. Did you play in the water? Did you watch a movie? It could be a movie at home or in the theater. So questions that um, most kids can participate in. So think about those main questions and to each question, add in how many Lego bricks and what color they need to collect. So for example, if the question is, 
If you have any pets like me, I have little Frederick the dog. If you have any pets, grab three Lego bricks. And this is so much fun. You pause in between. Kids are digging in the buckets. I would spread them out around the room. They're digging in the buckets, finding green Lego pieces. You could talk about different shades of green. It could be see-through green. If it's green and you pick three, good job. This one's really great too because as they're searching, you can talk to them about who their pet is or whatever the answer is to the question that you asked. And then move on from there. Kids who might not be able to say yes to that question, if it's not true about them, they can build with the pieces they have on hand. So having a great variety of questions, everyone will be able to grab some Lego pieces and participate and you will get to know them a little bit better. This third activity goes along with one of our favorite questionnaires, Rosie Revere Engineer. Now, as a STEM teacher, you probably have a big love for these sweet little characters. You have Rosie Revere Engineer, Ada Twist Scientist, who now has her own show on Netflix. Highly recommend. It's so much fun. Iggy Peck Architect. There are some other friends that are in the collection and other friends coming up from there. So after you read this story with your class, you can have a class discussion about things that fly. And you haven't heard the story. Rosie Revere is trying to build a flying machine for her great, great aunt Rose. And she keeps giving up. She keeps trying. She keeps failing. She keeps trying and failing. Finally, she figures out an invention. So as a class, after reading the story, you can talk about different things that fly in the sky. It could be animals. It could be machines. It could be made up things. Talk about those things that fly. And then students can plan and brainstorm their own type of flying machine. It could be real. It could be imaginary. From there, you can provide them different makeup space materials. This could be limited supplies that they could build with, maybe popsicle sticks, tape, small cups, whatever you have on hand, cardboard. And then you could even use Lego bricks as well. So if you don't have a whole lot of makerspace things yet, you could use those non-consumable items and students can build their flying machine. If you even want to get more creative, you could print out a little picture of Rosie and her great, great aunt Rose to add to their creation and even think of ways that students can modify and make their designs even better. This activity you could stretch out for many days. You could have each part of the engineering design process while um, you read the story and really research about those flying things. Or if you want to make it quick, you can just skip to that building part. So knowing your kids, maybe how long you have had the kids, the age of your kids, this is a great one to jump right in and really tie in that STEM and stories connection. Another fun STEM and stories activity that you can do with your kids goes along with the book, There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed Some Books. You could do this really for any version, but the one about the books is the good back to school one. So after reading this story with your class, you can have all of the images put up of all the things that she swallows. It is so crazy. And some younger classes might even start laughing and think it's kind of weird. I did have some kindergarten classes say, this is a weird book. And I said, I know she, I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, you have all the things that she ate. And then you can do a lot of different things. You can have students build the different things that the old lady ate and make a old lady mouth and feed them in order of the story so they can get creative with how they build those items, whatever types of materials you want them to use. You can even print out those pictures. And if you're brave enough, you can add in robots your first month with kids. I'm not brave enough, but maybe you are. You can have those pictures and kids can code to the different images of the things that she ate in order of the story or in whatever order they choose. They can also build the items using pixel blocks. And I like to use Bloxels. Now, Bloxels are a little bit expensive. There actually is a separate subscription that you can purchase where kids can create their own video games using the blocks. There's a whole connection with that. I actually don't have the money to buy the subscription, but I do love the blocks because it comes on this big grid and these tiny cubes and the kids can build pixel art with it. So you could have the images up and students can build the different things that are in the story. This could be even an opportunity for kids to have station rotations your first um, couple weeks with you. So this is a cool and engaging way to take the story even further and add on a lot of hands-on elements. 
This last STEM back to school activity for you to try is a digital option that I would recommend for second grade and up, and it is called Apps About Me. Now you can create a slide deck for students that have different phone outlines, and on each outline there's a different app, a fake app, we're not coding on this one, but a fake app that students can create and get to know more about each other. Again, this can be something you can do in one day or you have a different slide each day. If you don't want to go digital, you could print this out. But the reason why I would keep it digital is so that one, you're not printing a million things, but depending on the platform you're sharing it with, whether it's Seesaw, Google Classroom, Schoology, you're giving students the opportunity to practice logging into the platform that you're going to be using in class how to navigate that platform, and also how to practice using the tools within it. Once they get into there, it's pretty self-explanatory what they need to work on. So it's not a super high overarching hard task. It's really fun because they get to share about them in different ways. Once they're in there, maybe they have a slide where they have the front page's little pictures that go along with their favorite things, like favorite animal, favorite color. Maybe there's another slide where it's the map app and they have to create a map of their favorite space, school, restaurant, their bedroom. So you can think of fun different things that relate to real life apps, but it's a way that students can share about themselves. Now you can have them share creatively, whether it is in Seesaw and creating a voiceover about it. Maybe they work in small groups and they share their favorite slide. This is a fun activity you can work on all week, or maybe even as a fast finisher, if you're doing a separate project, like I do STEM Survival Camp, which was in episode four. I do STEM Survival Camp, but then with the older kids, I do assign this apps about me. So if they finish the part for the day, they have something they can go on and work on. Again, I've had the kids for a few years, so they're used to what platforms I use already. So they are a little bit more independent, but this is just a fun digital option that you can have kids design digitally. As a recap, here are the five back to school STEM activities that we talked about in today's episode. First is the classroom rules puzzles. Second, all about me brick build. Third, the STEM and stories activity with Rosie Revere engineer. Fourth, our second STEM and stories with there was an old lady who swallowed some books. And fifth, our digital apps about me activity. I have all all of these linked for you in our show notes, naomimeredith.com slash episode seven, where you can check out what these activities look like in my classroom, and you can even get templates that are prepared for you and save you a lot more time with planning. Thank you so much again for joining me on today's episode, and I will chat with you soon.